Okay, people, a lot needs to be said. There is a lot that needs to be said after One Piece chapter 1026 between gigantic climactic battles wrapping themselves up. I've been telling ya, One Piece's Wano arc is wrapping itself up slowly but surely because you got Jack falling in this chapter. You got Peril Sparrow falling in this chapter. You got potentially new hockey powers from Luffy. You got the skies splitting. This almost like, as I'm describing it, sounds like the plot of a One Piece film or something and no, th this is the manga right now in all of its full glory. We got a revival that, I'll be honest with you, I'm actually happy about. And it's not necessarily a revival because seemingly this person escaped and is still alive. And I'm thankful about it. And I'm going to tell you why I'm thankful that that piece of garbage, that filth bug known as Orochi is still around. I'm very, very happy. I'm like, yeah, like Oda. Good job. I'm going to tell you why because th th this is... Epic, I, I guess we could use that word, right? Epic. There, there's a lot to be said, though. Without further ado, people, let's jump into a little bit of that One Piece greatness. The battles, fam. The epicness. The insanity. The manning up. Like, yo, manning up is a big deal. Let's talk about it. For no matter how you know, get it done. No So as I said, chapter 1026 of One Piece, a whole lot of stuff going on from fights to manning up to potentially new hockey powers from Luffy to battles wrapping themselves up to a, a quote unquote revival or somebody that we thought already twice now bit the big one still around. But let's jump from the beginning. For starters, we had a nice color page. Nothing too crazy. In fact, I only really like it because Nami's in there, but I've never been a fan of the Tontadas and you got Leo there from the Tontadas measuring something. It's a, you know, it's a, a comedy, nothing. I don't, I don't even say it's comedy. It's just supposed to be like cute. I guess you would say because they're like measuring something for like a little lion cub or whatever. I was like, eh, not a fan of Tontadas. Nami looks nice. What else? That has no bearing on the chapter though. But the chapter starts off in the flower capital. You see Tengu there, you know, the whole celebration that's going on over there. Basically a farce because they don't even know what's happening right now with Onigashima that is approaching rapidly or whatnot. But basically you got Tengu there and he's with Otoko and he's basically keeping her occupied. However, Otama is, you know, a whole different story because Otama went and of course has been you know in the midst of the battles and everything that's been going on over there in the war and basically Tengu is just worried about her like it's you know simple start nothing extravagant to say the least but definitely him worried that something might happen and if she's okay because you know that's a little girl that is going into the midst of battles so definitely understandable of a way to start when it comes to that character because yeah little girl went over there and Tengu was a righteous dude to begin with and the flower capital sky like I said is basically all shrouded and mist it's cloudy so they don't understand the doom that is impeding which you would think the people by now would know like Orochi's a very horrible guy like there's nothing to be trusted about this man but at the end of the day it is what it is they're not expecting that he's about to basically have Onigashima which at the end of the day that's also under Kaido's order so the, the people they're, they're in for one hell of a surprise to say the least but then you cut to there's a guy that's on a roof one of Kaido's people and he's essentially narrating and reporting back to all his people what has been going on thus far with everything he's like yo there's two dragons facing off in the sky it, it's getting crazy out here fam and it's kind of funny how still to this point many many people are confused and don't know who the heck that is the pink dragon like i get it a lot of people first of all they didn't see momo when he would turn into his dragon form he only did it a few times like what probably a handful of times at this point also you're not going to expect even if you see momo go into that transformation that he's going to be able to all of a sudden in the midst of war turn into a dragon the size of kaido like you're only expecting expecting him to be you know that little failed experiment type of form that he had so you're not going to expect that all of a sudden he's Kaido sized and he's throwing hands so to speak in a big massive way like you're just gonna be like whoa that, that that's Momonosuke he's not you know he's not built like that he don't got heart like that but he's doing it up and Yamato thinks back which is basically giving context clues to Yamato to confirm that that's Momonosuke because she thinks back that oh wait a minute didn't Momo said that he wished he could turn into a big giant dragon like that or a big monster that could help people because you know 
know, Momo still, even with all the scaredness around him, he still genuinely wanted to help people. Like, that's one of the big things. Like, this is why everything is going on. He wanted to stop all of this. And the person reporting says that, you know, it's unknown who the identity of the dragon is, but it's clearly an enemy. And even Queen is there, like, saying, what the heck is going on? So Yamato is holding Kaido off all this time, which, again, that means that they're still in the midst of the battle, which I want to see more of that battle. Like, don't get me wrong. Some of the stuff that was covered in this chapter, the fight's pretty epic stuff. Not going to deny that. Again, like, especially towards the end, which we'll get to in a little bit, whatnot. But I definitely want to see more of that. Like, I hope Oda is not going to just sideline the crap out of Queen and King versus Zoro and Sanji. I want more of that. I'm just saying, like, I don't want just Queen chiming in with a word or two here or there. I want to see him getting knocked around. Come on. And we cut to the big battle. And here's where I'm like, let's go, baby. Let's do it. Because for starters, Kaido is readying up a blast breath towards them. And Luffy's like, yo, he's about to blast breath for us. H hit him back with one. Because we got to keep on remembering that. Momo is learning throughout this fight on how to be a big dragon. Like, it's not like Momo had any time to prepare, any time to learn any of this stuff. Like, Momo is on the fly figuring all this stuff out. For crying out loud, it was just a chapter ago where he was like, oh, I can't see. There's debris in my eye. Luffy, help me. Like, it's really all that he's running off of adrenaline at this point, running off of ambition and vengeance to a certain degree to avenge his father, his fallen father, and his mother. Like, that's really what's pushing Momo right now because other than that, he's just kind of like, he's a kid at the end of the day. No matter how big he is, no matter how much he looks like Kaido's dragon, this is still a little shrimp. But Kaido blasts off one of his blast breath and Momo is barely able to dodge, which I gotta just give kudos at. Hey, at least he freaking dodged it. Like, you wouldn't expect Momo to be able to do any of this. And here's where something that I like is going on starts to really take effect because Luffy whispers something into Momo's ear and then goes into a gear fist and starts attacking Kaido or heading towards Kaido. And basically what he told Momo in his ear was, yo, go bite him. That's going to be the perfect distraction. So boom, we can use teamwork. And Momo's still scared. Like, that's probably one of the only things you would argue that it's not necessarily something that you can be frustrated with, but it does feel a little bit like, oh, this kid. But at the end of the day, you got to remember, yeah, this kid. This is a kid. So like, you know, he's like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. And basically, it's like Luffy trying to put into effect some teamwork. Because remember, when all is said and done, when Big News Morgan is reporting on this, it's probably going to be that Luffy and the son of Odin, Momonosuke, came and conquered unless Momo decides to go under a new name because there's going to be people that I'm sure are going to question and want to know like and want to even try and potentially like wait a minute aren't you a kid how are you running Wano now what's going on when all is said and done so it, there's a possibility Momo might go under a different name of some sort which I don't know if that would work because just because you know Odin at the end of the day he wants to you know retain his father's name he might just say I'm Kozuki Momonosuke I don't care yeah and they might not actually tell people like exactly how it is or it might actually break the news that Orochi was crazy holy cow i just thought about this big news morgan when all is said and done and he's reporting everything it might look that no there was no time jump or anything like that like momonosuke he came as a grown man he was hiding out he survived all this time and he took his time to strike there was no time leap or anything like that because that would actually explain perfectly why he's still a grown man to the people that don't understand what just happened or anything like that so that would actually work very well but as momo is saying i can't in regards to going to bite kaido he thinks back and this is something that has been pushing Momo if you noticed throughout these last couple chapters to actually make moves he thinks back of everything that happened at Kuri Castle of how his mother you know died his father how Kaido did him left him there crying and everything and it kind of motivates him again so you can see which I feel like there's going to need to be just a bit more because that's not the message of One Piece vengeance you know conquers everything but he, it's definitely vengeance and it's anger that is allowing him to make moves right now like his anger every time he thinks of what Kaido did is what's pushing him like I can't do it I don't know if I can do it thinks back oh Kaido did that shit. let me do it and he actually manages to bite Kaido which I was like yo really <laughs> yeah we could have pierced this dude for nothing but you gotta come through which I guess hey big dragon you know dragon he's dragon if you want to call it that and I loved it I ain't gonna lie I love seeing it if you missed my one piece anime video where I kind of ranted a little bit I went off on Kaido I love to see him squirm as Momonosuke is biting Kaido he thinks back yet again to what was said to him by Kaido about his father and he bites him harder and Kaido's just there, ooh, 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 
you do is laugh. I can't do it. But it's kind of crazy that while all that is going on, Kaido, like, instead of, like, just, you know, being, like, angry about it or whatever, like, oh, you know, this kid, he's just more so annoyed. Like, he looks back at him as he's getting bitten and says, yo, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> like, that's kind of crazy, but also very appropriate for somebody like Kaido that, you know, what, what are you doing? Like, I'm not really phased by it necessarily. Like, yeah, it hurts for a moment, but who are you? What, what, what do you think you're doing? And I love how Momo's reaction to what are you doing, boy, is met with, again, even more anger. You ruined my country. If it wasn't for you, my mother, my father. He even thinks back to a, a point where Yamato had to save him and shit like that. Like, it's just all straight up rage, which... Yeah, that's actually very appropriate for a kid that you took everything from him. Kaido and Orochi, especially Orochi. I gotta get a moment of Momo and Orochi. But either way, this is one of the people that is responsible for the downfall of his people, the downfall of his country, the downfall of his lineage, and everything horrible that has happened in his life since all of that went down at the castle. I mean, for crying out loud, yet again, he stole his youth now. At this point, he had to age up into a grown-ass man, never experienced his full-on childhood because of him. Him. But going into play, that teamwork went through because following that, as Momo is distracting Kaido, biting Kaido, Luffy comes through with a nice punch to Kaido's face, and it's working out. It's working out. Again, I was skeptical when we had chapter 1000 and Luffy was unable to catch that W and took the L and was thrown off on Agashima. I remember I was like, really? Like, really we're doing this, Oda? But the fact that this time around he's coming back and, you know, you could throw it in there. It's basically about, like, you know, friendship and bonds and stuff stuff like that but definitely it was the teamwork that is what's changing the outcome this time around the teamwork between luffy and somebody that is really pissed off like the other people that was rocking with luffy when he went up against kaido last time you know they, they want to stop him there's some i guess you could say history even with like kid and how his whole team was demolished and everything by kaido none of them have the same rage or the powers at that at this point that momo has as a dragon to be able to go up against kaido and help out in this way that luffy is doing right now also in between all of this something change with Luffy which we'll talk about in a little bit however we cut back to some of the other battles that are going on between Dog Storm and Cat Viper with you know Peril Sparrow and Jack and one of the things I said is that with dragons storm clouds come so there won't be no full moon which basically them without their so long they're, they're not faring well they're looking down right now I gotta lie this is one panel of Cat Viper or Neko Mamushi uh he, he's looking down bad and Jack is trash talking which I'm there thinking to myself like yo Jack you need to relax you need to relax he's like if you would have been able to hit or land one more good hit on me I probably wouldn't be able to stand right now fam but you look like you're out of luck mate Peril Sparrow talking about luck I'm just thinking like Peril Sparrow yes you have definitely been lucky there are so many times where you should have been throttled to death and you still standing so I'll admit there's been a little bit of luck on your candy app side i'll just say that but either way they are still struggling because again with no full moon their su long forms wore out basically like you know their great ape so to speak forms are non-existent right now and they're kind of down bad but then we cut back to the luffy and kaido situation and something luffy says right here very very impactful and very very true to momo's character because he basically starts screaming momo you just bit an emperor of the sea there's nothing more that you need to be scared of <laughs> it's just thinking like some of the worst possible things in the world that could happen it's kind of already happened you just right now bit an emperor of the sea you just did the damn thing you manned up you shouldn't be scared of anything anymore which that adds into the whole rage of like what i felt a little bit of like oh this kid man i, I can't do the blast breath i'm too scared luffy help me like there's nothing to be scared of anymore you good so it's again adding into that teamwork that's been working in this chapter between luffy and momo to take down kaido like he's reassuring him man i go a lot you need a friend like luffy in your life when you're going up against hard times like this guy right here this is how you do it this is how you have somebody that really is going to bring you to that next level of mentally where you need to be if you have somebody screaming at you like yo the worst is over like you there's nothing more that you need to fear in your heart get a friend like luffy and you see a few other people are shocked like yamato it kind of confirmed her suspicion that that's momo because she just heard luffy also hearing luffy because a lot of people thought you know luffy was dead ever since he got thrown off on agashima and stuff like that like a lot of people are like oh snap and then you see zoro and sanji in the midst of their battle which i'm still gonna say i ain't gonna lie i want to see that fight i don't want to just see little clippings here or there and i'm sure oda's gonna cut back to it because we thought the same thing was gonna happen with the jack fight and kind of did kind of didn't i guess you could say but i want more of the queen and king versus zoro and sanji this is big stuff i'm just saying i 
gotta throw that in there but even them they're kind of reluctant like Zoro and Sanji are there like wait he said Momo like could it be and they're like nah nah definitely not not that shrimp however Luffy directs Momo to yo go and stop Onigashima don't worry about Kaido I'll handle it and right there I go lie. I was like let's go baby round three if Luffy doesn't get the W this time I don't want no more rematches like somebody else go up against Kaido I'm dead serious right now when I say that I don't want to see Luffy throw hands against Kaido if he gets knocked out thrown off on a guy whatever it is I don't want to see him no more like that's it take the L and walk away if you don't get it done right now you got this giant dragon that just helped you distracted him you you know this is your third time around you better get the win if not Luffy I'm sorry pirate king yada 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 you gotta move right now because this is now the third attempt I, I believe in him like everything is wrapping up so he should get the W but if he doesn't if he gets dusted off it's time to reevaluate who's fighting Kaido however he says I guarantee you I'll win and we got some more reactions Big Mom basically just laughing like yo you hear this guy this guy's an idiot yeah you, you think right huh and then you got kids reactions saying you better win and Law saying yo what you been doing all this time because remember he's been kind of MIA ever since he got thrown off of Onagashima so yeah people are a little bit like yo what's up what's going on here a lot of confusion going on now that I think about it throughout this chapter like a lot of people confused about Momo confused about Luffy's whereabouts and what the hell he's been going through right now like confused about this giant dragon like there's a lot of questioning going on at the same time you got like Kaido's mans that is screaming on that intercom and stuff so I'm sure some of the allied people are gonna hear too but a lot of miscommunication all over the place and it looks like the final round is ready to begin because Tama you see her there crying you got Frankie you got randoms everybody just going yeah Luffy go do it do it which again I'm under the assumption this is it no more whatever happens it's all ending right here and Kaido charges up against Luffy and continues to talk trash like there is there even a single chance you can beat me and Luffy says oh as long as I'm breathing there's infinite chances which means that no I don't want infinite chances this needs to be it and them clashing boom right there something very very major I'm imagining that this is a demonstration of Luffy's new hockey capabilities a lot of people have been pointing out about the development of Luffy's arm and how it kind of looks all mystified as you see in like some of the openings of the anime and just in general i'm imagining that he's had to have some type of hockey development in between the last time and now to the point where as they clash the skies the clouds of the skies literally splits which leads so perfectly like mwah, oda did it so perfectly that helps out with the battle of jack and peril sparrow with you know the sulong forms because the moon is now able to shine through again and that was just masterfully done but I ain't gonna lie, that definitely is a huge indicator that Luffy's hockey has developed. Remember, throughout all of Wano, going back to even the Udon prison, everything he learned with Hyogoro and stuff like that, that is huge development from him just starting to understand that he could use hockey to break somebody from the inside out, and that was the only way he was going to be able to pierce somebody like Kaido. From that to where we're at right now, that he's splitting the skies, Luffy clearly has developed. This is definitely something new that we haven't seen yet, and it's probably only going to continue to intense and only going to continue to to develop as we keep moving forward i'm imagining that when all is said and done i don't know if luffy is going to encase his entire body in some sort of hockey thing which would kind of make sense on some like you know when mega man fights somebody after mega man i know people like yo finette what are you talking mega man in one piece just just follow me you know how mega man basically when he beats somebody he takes on a capability of them maybe we're seeing something like that and maybe luffy's going to embody his entire body in hockey as an armor and then also break Kaido from the inside out because he's going to be able to withstand the shock so to speak of what Kaido can throw at him because that's one of the big things is that Kaido is too freaking strong he hits him one time with Thunder Baguia Luffy's out cold out of the match it's all said and done if he's able to have some type of armor to withstand some of those blows from Kaido we're going to be Gucci and I think this is the catalyst to whatever is about to occur with Luffy's newfound abilities and as the moon shines we cut to Peril Sparrow and Jack they know that it, it, it's a rapido here it's over because neko mamushi and dog storm are able to go back into their sulong forms and i love how cat viper is like wait a minute what what was you saying who had all the luck just now and oh that that, that was hype i go a lot because it leads into things are getting done we actually have major progression on some battles that has been like 
well, are they wrapping up? What's up? No, they wrapped up entirely with this one. Because Nekomamushi uses Feline Frenzy and attacks Peril Sparrow, seemingly knocking him out. Likewise with Dogstorm attacking Jack, which I'm more so hype off of Dogstorm taking out Jack. Even though Nekomamushi, like, he looks epic as hell when he's attacking. It's just that Jack is a bigger threat. Like, Peril Sparrow, he's, you know, one of Big Mom's kids and whatnot, and the oldest son, I guess you would say. But I'm more so hype about Jack falling, finally, because it's been a long time coming, and all of the horrible things Jack's done. Like, Peril Sparrow did some stuff, too, and it looks like Oda tried to match up. Like, they both are, like, you know, kind of leaders of, of these, you know, two different entities entirely with Peril Sparrow and Jack and whatnot. You know, they hire ups, and they also both did some horrible things. Peril Sparrow was somewhat responsible for the death of Pedro, so they both did some very disgusting shit. Like, especially, you know, Jack tying dudes up over there in Zoe and stuff like that. So, for them to both fall at the same time, it kind of makes sense. I'm still just more hype off of Jack falling, which it's kind of sad at the same time because Jack was hyped up so much when he began and to see him finally fall which it's not by any means of like a weak person that took him out like these so long forms they've been shown time and time again to be no joke but yeah it's like it's a bittersweet feeling I guess you would say and it's confirmed eldest son of the big mom pirates Peril Sparrow down and out and Jack the drought down and out as well huge movements there huge but the final panel of this chapter one of the first things I started talking about in this video we see Orochi's face and he says you're kidding me there goes Jack but I guess that's not my problem as he's hiding out I am so happy right now like Oda you know you could have brought back Ace you could have brought back Whitebeard on some Edo Tensei that would have been terrible <laughs> it's, it's a joke relax but you allowed Orochi to essentially somewhat return and um I'm so excited to be able to see him feel the punishment that he deserves hands down we're gonna get that momo approaching him because remember it was orochi that tricked the whole kozuki family bloodline and did all these things like yeah kaido was the muscle kaido did some dirty stuff in, in all of this when it came to odin but it was all under orochi's lead all under orochi tricking and doing all these dastardly things so when momo finally approaches him as a grown man first of all just imagine especially if momo looks like his father if he has like you know the pot head shit that Odin had going on oh my god Orochi's gonna piss himself and I want to see him squirm like a bug and Momo better not show an ounce of mercy to this guy stomp him to death if he goes into that big dragon form cut off his last head whatever it takes but oh I was so happy to see that yes he, he needed to get he, he got off too easy he got off too easy getting his head chopped off and then the scabbards chopping off his heads he needs to be punished and he needs to look into the eyes of Momonosuke Kozuki the heir to the throne and see that you were a fraud all along you ain't nothing but a piece of garbage and your time is up and oh i can't wait overall very very intense chapter a lot of stuff going on I'm very curious what you guys think for starters how did you feel about the wrapping up of basically jack the drought falling along with peril sparrow do you think it was done right how did you i, I ain't gonna lie I, I feel like there's no way you could hate that it connected perfectly of luffy and kaido clashing the clouds splitting leading to the moon being shining like i felt like that was so masterfully done how do you feel about momo as he continues to man up in this battle against kaido um your thoughts on orochi once again returning oh, i can't wait he's gonna get punished so bad and your overall thoughts and expectations for one piece 1027 and beyond again one hell of a chapter again insane chapter craziness but that's all i have for this one thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you liked anything i had to say or enjoyed the video drop me a like i'd greatly appreciate it and if you want more from me make sure to subscribe follow me on twitter instagram hit that bell to get all notifications and if you want to follow any of my other social media links in the description below i'm from that world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life boy have an awesome day peace in and orochi your days are numbered i can't wait to see it happen luffy's new potential hockey capabilities against kaido momo manning up just so much of that one piece greatness yo 2021 it's been been one piece greatness have an awesome one Seven.